Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. This time we're going to talk about drum kits and VSTs and MIDI and all of that good stuff as it relates to your DAW. So here's the basic premise. Uh, let's say you are somebody who has started to get into recording and music engineering. You've got a DAW, for example, Reaper is the one that I use, but this could probably apply in just about any DAW out there, um, whether it's Logic or Cubase or Pro Tools. Uh, the fundamentals are all the same. And let's say that you want to add some drums to your sound, but you don't have the time, space, or equipment, or knowledge to do this with a real drum kit, and you want to use a drum machine or a drum VST plugin. So um, I'm going to talk, show you guys a, a free drum VST plugin. It's this one right here. It's called MT Power Drum Kit 2. It is completely free. There's no strings attached, and uh, it sounds pretty good. And um, I'm going to show you how to install it and download it and then use it and create some basic drum loops in your DAW. And then, you know, a lot that's going to show you how to use MIDI and all those types of things. Um, and this, a lot of that stuff would apply to other drum softwares like Superior Drummer, Easy Drummer, Steven Slate Drummer. A lot of them are very, very similar. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, let's start off by, first of all, talking about how to download and install a VST plugin. So regardless of what you're using, the process might be a little bit different. I think like Easy Drummer might have just an executable file you can run, but with MT Power Drum Kit 2, first just do a Google search for MT Power Drum Kit, or um, I will put the uh, this link that I'm looking at in the description of this video. Then you want to download the. Uh, there are four options here depending on what type of software you're using. I'm using 64-bit Windows. If you're a Mac user, use this one. If you don't know, um, I guess do a Google search for how to figure out what bit of Windows you're using. But when you download this file, it will uh, download as this. I've already downloaded it ahead of time to speed up the process. So once you've downloaded this file, then you get these right here. There's a little installation text file. You, I'm basically just going to tell you how to do this. So what you need to do is take these two files, this mtpowerdrumkit.dll, as well as the mt content.pdk. These two files are the ones that you really need. Um, so you want to just highlight them and copy them, or you can drag and drop. And then you need to find your VST plugins folder. Now this is the folder that you are using in your DAW to load your VST plugins. The one that I use is at um, my computer, C, program files, x86, VST space plugins. This is the one that I use and then you just take these two files and you drop them in here. I'm not going to do it because I've already installed it. So, um, But once they're in this folder, you go back to your DAW. I'm using Reaper and then you want to open up your settings menu or preferences. I believe this is under options, preferences. And then you want to find your plugins and then VST and then just hit re-scan. So you, right here where it says this is the VST, the folder I just put it in, that's how you know where to put it. Then you click re-scan. And then your new plugin will be loaded into your DAW. Um, that process, that basic idea applies to loading any VST plugin to any DAW. Is That's the basic concept. So now that you have your drum kit loaded into your DAW, let's talk about using it. So first and foremost, I've um, loaded up a basic track here. I'll just play it. Just a very basic, straightforward drum group. Uh, let's talk about how to do that. Uh, so first you want to load up a new track, and then you want to um, add a new MIDI item. So this right here is going to be, let's just, uh, I'm going to leave that first one up. This is going to be your MIDI item. You can do all sorts of different things with this. You can make it bigger. Um, I'm just going to make a one bar, and I'm going to glue these together. So this right here is this piano roll. This is where you're going to create your MIDI notes. But we'll come back to that in a second. So then on top of this MIDI track, you want to add your VST plugin. So to do that, you hit Effects, and then you want to go to VSTi. And so uh, the one that I just added is this Empty Power Drum Kit, and hit OK. It's going to load up a second and it's going to ask you to 
Okay, so there, here we've got the drum kit. Um, when you click on the drum, you can see it. There are just some different options here. You can mix things if you want. This is actually very helpful. You can choose from some standard grooves. So this is kind of, now that we've got our kit, our drum kit loaded in, uh, there's probably three different basic ways that you can um, use the drum kit software to create an actual drum beat. So the first way is to pick from one of their standard grooves, and this is kind of what I recommend for if you don't really know what you're doing. Um, so they've got all these different styles here. I'm just going to pick an eighth. Uh, let's do closed hi-hat and just this first one. So what I'm doing right now is I double-click and I'm just testing it. So you have a couple options. Um, they have this composer right here. So you can drag this in here. It's going to sound really good. Now with these, with right here, you can see that it's played for three bars. So that leaves space for a fill. So let's say that one sounds good. Then I'm just going to put this here. And so now what I've created is three bars of this groove that I listened to first, and then one bar of fill. And let's say that this is exactly what I want. Then I can select both of these and then uh, move the window over and then drag and drop them onto my track. Didn't quite get the second one. So now, oh, it did. Uh, so now I've got those two. If we just go ahead and listen to this for a second. So you can see it had three bars of the basic drum groove with the bar fill at the end. Um, and using the stock grooves is a really nice way. If you're going for a basic drum beat, the stock groove is just a really handy, easy way to get an approximation of what you want. So what I have done mostly when I'm starting is I'll find a stock groove that's kind of in the ballpark of what I'm trying to achieve. And then if you double click, you can open this up. And then this is the specific MIDI notes. So um, each of these little marks apply to when the MIDI triggers. And then each of these vertical notes is a piece of the drum kit. So this is a splash. Um, there's the hi-hat, there's the kick, the snare, um, and so each of these pertains to each of these notes. So then you can take this, so you can say, well, I don't really like this flash here, I just kind of want some more. I just want some more straight hi-hat, so, and then there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can edit this. Um, one of the important things to keep in mind of is the velocity. You don't want your drums to sound unrealistic, so you want to um, kind of experiment with different velocities to try to get some realism there. Think about how a drummer would actually play a song, how hard they would hit things, um, and, and that kind of experiment from there. So the first way is messing around with some stock grooves. The second way is you can just do this from scratch. So if you are kind of you understand how MIDI works and you if you want a specific type of of drum loop one that isn't necessarily uh, kind of really you even really know what you're maybe the stock grooves aren't really doing it for you they're not really close so you can use this to do it completely from scratch I'm just going to glue these guys together so then you can create this totally on your own this groove up here I just did this ahead of time this was a groove that I made and typically what I do and one of the advantages is when you're doing this is you can program in some of the little details and to get it to sound a little bit more realistic so with this hi-hat um, you can actually look and see that the velocities are different from every single one and also uh, Reaper has a humanize feature which can give you some slight variance in the timing velocity and some timing bias so basically what this does is 
If you look, if I zoom in on these notes, you can see they're not even actually hitting exactly on the downbeat. And that's because the, the, the humanizer is creating some pseudo-random uh, variance in the, in the, so it's not perfectly kind of, kind of computer, very fake and sterile sounding. It kind of gives it a little bit more liveliness because humans don't play like machines. They make little bit little mistakes, and so our ears are used to hitting that, hearing some of that variance. Um, so I I I like doing this. It gives me a little bit more control over kind of the drum kit, and it, it the stock grooves are a good place to start, but a lot of times they need polishing. And if you know what you want right away, then and you can kind of get used to quickly creating these. Uh, it's this can be a really nice route to go. And then the third path is if you have a like a MIDI pad or a MIDI keyboard like an external thing or even you can use your keyboard I know that there are ways to do that so you can actually program um, I don't I, th I think I can do it in Reaper I really don't am not very experienced with this but I'll try to show you guys real quickly so you want to program this to record and then you're gonna want to open up the virtual MIDI keyboard so what this does is allows me to um, pro program these drums live. So then I can just play this, and then I can use the keyboard. Okay, it's, it's actually set up to record my voice because I need to have the input be MIDI. So then once I do this, I mean, it's probably not going to sound very good because I don't really know exactly what I'm doing, but that is an option that you can do if you like, if you maybe you have drumsticks and a drum pad, or if you want to use the keys, that's another way. And then you're, you're not relying on the kind of the MIDI notes to get that computer generated feel. You can, you're already getting a human performance. Um, so you get some of the realism there. It really just comes down to your personal preference, how you're, what you're most familiar with, um, and what you get used to using. But just be aware that those are kind of the three basic ways that people pro tend to program these MIDI drums. And then the last thing I want to say is that this applies to, so I just showed off this MT Power Drum Kit. I also have Easy Drummer, and it applies almost in the exact same way. The, the basic fundamentals of, of loading in the plugin programming the MIDI and then applying the VST over top it's it's basically identical and each program kind of has their own take on things um, for example easy drummer has a built-in humanizer it has a couple of different kits so like uh, if I go to easy drummers plugin you can actually pick between a bunch of different snares and they each have different sounds you can pick between different bass drums just a whole bunch of, of things that you can do there and it is just, uh, yeah, it kind of takes some getting used to. So depending on what your program you're using, and for example, this um, this one that I'm using is actually, I had it muted in order, it didn't work. The one that I'm using is pretty straightforward. You, uh, with the kit, um, so you don't have a lot of, I guess, customization to like tweak the change of the drum sound. You're kind of stuck with one, but as a basic tool, I mean, it's pretty really really nice um, and it competes very well you don't have kind of the same tweaking and customization as maybe some of the other ones but if you just need some really good sounding basic drum sounds it's a really nice way to go so covered a whole bunch of different things there I hope that some of or at least a little bit is helpful to you guys please let me know down in the comment section below if there's anything you have questions with or want to see some tutorials about whether it's guitar or Reaper mixing recording anything like that and I'll see you again soon bye